A lot of surgeons tell me they want to start performing hydrostent surgery because of its benefits in glaucoma, that they worry that it's complex or takes a long period of time. There's a steep learning curve, and certainly none of those. This is routine surgery, three minutes, or less than three minutes, start to finish, and this is unedited. You can see here, I'll make two paracentesis incisions, just big enough to use a bimanual irrigation aspiration. This is just done under topical anesthesia, the patient is sedated. Uh, make my uh, main incision, I'm right-handed, so that I'm going to enter the trabecular mesh work about four clock hours from the incision. I've used some Amvisc Plus in the eye there and some on the cornea. I make my incisions just limbal enough that there's a little bit of bleeding so that I know where they are, but not so much that it gets in the interface and between the cornea and the gonioscopy lens that I use for the procedure. Gonioscopy lens goes onto the eye and I insert the hydrostent. Not every operation goes perfectly every time, and you'll see here I don't get the hydrostent in on my first pass. This is most likely because I've pumped up the eye too firmly with the viscoelastic at the start. And so you'll see here as the hydrostent comes out, it's not in the canal of Schlem. I haven't ad adequately entered the trabecular meshwork. So I do that a couple of times there, and I, I realize what I'm doing. You'll see I start to make a small little incision into the trabecular meshwork with a little bit of a anteroposterior type uh, movement just to make sure I'm really sitting appropriately in the canal. And you'll see here I start to do that now. So a couple of false starts. As you can see, even with those false starts, the surgery is very quick and very routine. That stent is sitting perfectly in the canal of Schlem there now. You can see all three windows very clearly behind the trabecular meshwork. It's sitting perfectly in the canal of Schlem sitting nicely there. It's always important to take the time to check the position of your stent, to check that the end hasn't popped out, and to check that the stent is sitting really nicely in that canal. It's important to take that extra bit of time. I have to rotate the microscope up to a vertical orientation. I've, I've rotated the microscope um, to, to 30 degrees to facilitate that insertion, and now I put it up vertically, and now I'm going to perform my irrigation aspiration. Very quick routine procedure for any anterior segment surgeon. Thorough irrigation aspiration to ensure there's no viscoelastic in the eyes. That will cause a pressure spike. It's perfectly normal to have a little bit of blood reflux out of the hydrostent and into the eye. You should, patients should expect a small hyphema the next day. It's great if they don't get one, but it's certainly no problem if they do. I hydrate my wounds with uh, kefazolin, which I also inject intracamerally into the eye. Then they don't need uh, antibiotics post-operatively. I do some subconjunctival kefazolin as well. I just give the patients Maxidex four times a day for two weeks, or you could replace that with a Levro if the patient is a node steroid responder. Operation finished in under three minutes.